Hello and welcome. I'm Ankit and you're watching the Daily News Simplified of 28th of March. Now in today's DNS, we'll be covering 8 important articles. But before moving forward, let me ask you to hit the like button and please do not press that do not forget to press that bell icon if you want to stay up to date with all our future content. So in our attempt to simplify today's important newspapers, we stumbled upon this piece of information in the business line newspaper. Now, if you look closely in this article, you'll see that the article suggests that due to implementation of government schemes, it has led to upliftment of tribals in India. Now, tribals, they are a vulnerable section in the Indian society. So naturally, any welfare schemes that are undertaken either by the central government or by the state government, it is important from GS paper to perspective. Also, if you look at the PYQs, especially in the mains of the year 2017 and 2016, you will find questions regarding two scheduled tribes that are members of the tribal community in India. So this topic, it is very much important from mains perspective. So in this regard, let us Get, uh, take a deeper look into what are the issues that plagues the development of tribals in the region and alternatively what are the steps that have been taken by the government in order to promote their upliftment or undertake their welfare understood but first let us understand who or what constitutes the tribal population now, there are some traits or characteristics based on which we can identify whether a community is a tribal community or not. But it is important to note that these conditions, they are not given anywhere, be it constitution or any statute by the government of India. However, these have been evolved over a period of time and have been attained a broader acceptance. So, uh, we can understand that tribals are the one who demonstrate what are known as primitive traits. First of all, these tribals, they are primarily engaged in activities like hunting, gathering, or they involve themselves in a process which is known as shifting cultivation. For example, they cultivate a piece of land and when that land becomes barren, they move to another piece of land. So this is what is called a shifting cultivation. And it is quite different from the normal agriculture that people practice. Because in normal agriculture, people cultivate a same piece of land over a period of time rather than shifting from one land to another. So when a community, it demonstrates a primitive trait, then that community can be called a scheduled tribe or a tribal community. Also, these tribals, they have a distinct culture. Because again, they subscribe to what is known as animistic form of religion because they either pray to their spirits or any god, which is quite different from the religions that are prevalent in a normal society. Also, because of their distinctive culture, they have remained only at a distinct geographical locations. So, because of this distinctive culture and distinctive geographical locations, what we have witnessed that these tribal communities, they have attained a sense of geographical isolation. Because in any normal rural or urban area in India, you will find members belonging to different communities living together in close quarters. However, it is quite different in case of tribal communities. Because first of all, these tribal communities, they live in close quarters but they live only among themselves and they do not intermingle with other sections of the society. And also, these tribals, they are shy of making contact from with another communities. So, because of their geographical isolation and their shy nature, because they are inhibitive to make contacts with another section of population, it has led to backwardness, both in social backwardness as well as educational backwardness among the tribal population and all these social and educational backwardness they have culminated into a sense of underdevelopment of tribal communities so these are the rough characteristics that are used to determine whether a community is 
ट्राइबल इन नेचर और नॉट सो इन दिस रिगार्ड द गवर्नमेंट हैज ब्रॉड फॉरवर्ड मेनी वेलफेयर स्कीम्स फॉर द ट्राइबल्स इन द कंट्री एंड दीज कैन बी कैटेगराइज इन टू डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द गवर्नमेंट थ्रू कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया एज वेल एज लॉज दैट आर सॉरी दैट आर पास बाय पार्लियामेंट एंड स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर दीज लॉज दे इंटेंड टू अपलिफ्ट द ट्राइबल्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया इट प्रोवाइड फॉर रेजर्वेशन ऑफ सीट्स इन एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन इन गवर्नमेंट जॉब्स एज वेल एज मेंबरशिप of legislative assemblies and parliaments in order to uplift or in order to promote the development of tribals because if the seats are reserved in educational institutions it will promote uh, education of tribals in these premier institutions further if reservations in jobs are provided it will increase the tribals representation in the government jobs and also if the seats are reserved in the legislatures of our country it will promote tribals to get elected and be a law maker in the country so these are the steps that have been taken by government to promote upliftment of the tribal communities also government it brought forward what is known as forest rights act in the year of 2006 now this forest rights act it recognizes that the tribals they control the land which is which have been passed to them by their ancestors and it is a community owned land further whatever minor forest produce have been grown over these lands the forest rights act it entails the ownership of these minor forest produce at the hands of tribals themselves so you can understand not just a uh, social security the government it also wants to promote economic security with the tribals of our country also government has looked forward to protect the rights of tribals in india as i have already highlighted because of their isolationist nature and their distinctive cultures tribals in our country have been historically discriminated against so the government it passed what is known as prevention of atrocities act of the year 1989 in order to safeguard the rights of the tribal because if tribals they were being subjected to isolation as well as discrimination then that tribals they have recourse with the law of the land because this particular piece of legislation it promotes or establishment of special courts in order to deal with the cases of violation of prevention of atrocities act also uh, the government it recognized that the tribals in a country they are quite distinctive in culture so because of their distinctive culture they live in a geographically isolated locations so in order to promote the tribal development the government it brought forward the self governance rights to tribals in a country and these are covered under 5th and 6th schedule of the indian constitution further laws that are passed under the panchayati raj institutions they are not normally applicable on these 5th and 6th schedule areas because the government it brought forward panchayat extension of scheduled areas act of the year 1996 to regulate the extension of laws which are passed by the panchayati raj institutions so you can understand government it not just protects the rights of the tribals but it also ensures the right to self govern of the tribals themselves further under the 6 schedule in particular tribals have been given increased power because these autonomous councils which are constituted on the 6 schedule of the constitution they not just have legislative as well as administrative functions but tribals through 6 schedule and its related bodies they also have judicial functions over the areas of the 6 schedule So you understand it is quite an important step for welfare of the tribals in our country further government it also safeguards the territorial control of tribals over their areas and it is done through implementation of what is known as inner line permit system because the non residents they cannot move or 
travel to this inner line permit areas without the permission of the local administration. So you can understand in a way it safeguards the territorial control of tribals over their inherited or their ancestral lands. So these were the gist of what were the welfare measures that have been taken by the government and also other schemes that have been implemented by the government in this regard have been provided in the notes. So you can refer to the notes after the session ends. Understood. But despite of these inherent very broad sense of welfare measures that have been taken by the government, tribals in a country they lag quite behind the national average or national population in terms of health and educational indicators. For example, the life expectancy of a member of a scheduled tribe which you can see from this particular slide is lesser than the national average. And this is also true in the terms of institutional delivery, the levels of immunization in a tribal child. So you can understand in terms of health indicators, the tribals in a country, they lag behind the national average. Whereas in terms of educational indicators, tribals, they also lag behind in the levels of literacy. Because the literacy levels of tribals based on the census 2011 information, it is well below the national literacy average. Further, because of less health and educational development, you can understand that tribals, they have been increasingly le living in poverty. So also because of the global multidimensional poverty index, it has highlighted that almost half of the tribals in a country, they fell below or they fall below what is known as the poverty line, which is very much different from the national population. Because currently India's poverty level as per the global multidimensional poverty index, it is around 27.9%. So in terms of poverty, you can understand that the levels of poverty is quite high in the tribal population. So this highlights that even without an elaborate sense of welfare measures, the tribals, they lag behind the national average. So this brings our attention to the tribals that the, to the challenges that the tribals in a country face. So let us deal with these challenges one by one. Now the first important challenge is the economic challenge that the tribals in a country face. Because as I have already highlighted, these tribals, they are engaged in the practices which are hunting, gathering or they involve themselves in what is known as a shifting cultivation practices. However, it is important to note that these practices, they only generate a certain amount of economic activity such as food or livelihood for the tribals. However, this was okay when the population levels of tribal was quite less. However, in terms of increased population growth, this subsistence level of practices that are tribals involved in, it is not an increased tribal population. So because of this subsistence model of economy that the tribals live in, it has resulted into food insecurity among the tribals. Further, as we have already witnessed, that due to increased level of development, that is urbanization, or mining activities, it has resulted into increased disposition of tribals from their inherited land. And let me give you an example. Because Ministry of Tribal Affairs, it highlighted that as much as 40% of the tribal population, they have been moved away from their historical lands because of their development activities. Now this understand that the burden of shifting or relocation it is quite high on the tribal population because only on these lands the development activities have been taking place recently further because of subsistence nature of their existence as well as disposition of their lands it has resulted into increasing indebtedness of the tribal household further in order to meet their day-to-day -day livelihood requirements these tribals, they have been forced to work as a bonded labor. 
so you can understand that the economic situation of tribals in the country it is quite precarious further let us understand how our social issues have been plaguing these tribal populations because you can understand that tribals they live quite in a distinctive way from the normal population so because of their distinctive way the mainland population it perceives it as a different kind of a living so in a way the normal population they have discriminated or protested the kind of living that tribals live so because of this historical discrimination that the tribals face it has led to marginalization of tribals in the indian society and because of low levels of educational that the tribals have attained which you can see from this literacy figures you can understand that the educational levels of the tribals in a country is still well below the national average so because of the discrimination marginalization and low levels of education the tribals they are unable to secure normal jobs and this has resulted into increased poverty of the tribals which i have also highlighted in this particular slide so this increased poverty and a low levels of education it has led to loss of culture and identity among the tribals because if tribals they want to get educated or want to get jobs they have to start living according to the mainstream population understood now let us deal with what kind of health challenges that the tribals face now as you can understand the levels of food security in the tribal population it is quite less than that of normal population so the levels of malnutrition especially it is quite prevalent in the tribal community because tribal children they face issues such as stunting or wasting right at the early childhood phases so this in a way it compromises their intellectual and physical development so because of this compromised nature of their physical development it has increased the mortality of tribal children because tribals they have a higher infant mortality rate as well as under 5 mortality rate so you can understand because of malnutrition it has led to increased mortality among the tribals further the healthcare access with the tribals it is also well below the national average and it is because of two reasons first of all the level of infrastructure development particularly with respect to healthcare access it is quite low in the tribal areas because these areas they are isolated from the normal areas further these tribals even they when they have healthcare access they are inhibitive to seek access or to seek treatments on modern medicine so this has not just increased the apprehension but it has also decreased the level of healthcare access of the tribal community in india so these were the issues related to the healthcare access now let us deal with what kind of environmental issues that the tribals have faced now you can understand that i have highlighted that modern development it has led to deforestation in the tribal areas now naturally you understand that these tribals they are very much dependent on forest for seeking their livelihood and their day to day needs but when deforestation takes place it leads to biodiversity loss thereby reducing the amount of produce that a forest produces so this in a way reduces their incomes as well as reduces their overall economic development further there is a phenomena which has been increasing over the past few years it is called a climate change now due to climate change it has resulted now this climate change it has resulted into increased level of vulnerability especially in the economically or ecologically vulnerable zones that are forest now because of this vulnerability in extreme weather events which are brought forward by climate change phenomena it has increased the vulnerability of the tribal communities because it is these tribal communities that primarily inhabit these forest areas and these forest areas they are bearing the brunt of climate change so these were the environmental issues 
Now let us move to the political or policy based issues. Now you understand the tribals, they have been given a fair share of representation, especially reservation of seats in both jobs as well as legislatures. However, despite their increased representation in the parliament and legislative assemblies, the issues that are prevalent in tribal communities, they are not adequately discussed in the floor of the house. So this creates what is called a challenge in terms of policy making. Now let us deal with implementation of important statutes. For example, as I have already highlighted, the government it brought forward uh, Panchayati Raj extension of to scheduled areas act and additionally the government it also brought forest rights act of the year 2006. However, the implementation of these acts in various states have been quite low as was originally desired because the state governments they have exploited various loopholes and procedural issues in order to not implement these particular statutes. So because of implementation issues of the laws as well as inadequate discussion of the tribal issues in the floor of the house, it has led to issues in the political sphere as far as tribals in the India are concerned. So these were the broad set of challenges that the tribals in the country faces. So naturally, let us now look at what should be the way forward in order to improve the development levels of tribals in the country. Now in this regard, let us discuss what the Khakha Committee has suggested in regards for tribal development in the country. Now the first suggestion of the Khakha Committee was that to provide the tribals in the country with agro-based training. Now, this based training, it will increase the productivity of agricultural land, especially that of that are cultivated by the tribes themselves. Further, the committee it also suggested that the government should look forward to develop labor-intensive processing units in the tribal areas because these labor-intensive units will first of all provide increased level of jobs to the tribal. So by increasing the productivity of their agriculture and providing the tribals with normal jobs will help increase the livelihood opportunities for the tribals in our country. Further, parents will also not be apprehensive to send their kids to school, especially when the schools they are populated or they are, they are taught by tribal teachers themselves. Further, uh, the Khaka committee, it also suggested of inclusion of tribal practices and cultures in curriculum as it will remove the apprehension that the tribal parents have with the modern education system. So also to promote the education levels of tribal kids, especially with that of uh, the most vulnerable of the tribal communities, the Khaka committee it suggested establishing of residential schools. So we can understand that this step was already taken by the government by establishment of Eklavya residential model schools in the tribal areas of the country. Further, with respect to healthcare sector, the Khaka committee it suggested that the government should undertake or should take development of social determinants of health. Because by improving social determinants such as income levels, educational levels, water and sanitation practices, as well as improving transport and connectivity in tribal areas, these social 
determinants will help improve the healthcare sector of the tribals. Further, the government it is also of the opinion of increasing the level of infrastructural development such as establishing primary healthcare centers as well as super speciality hospitals in the tribal areas in order to provide them with increased access to healthcare services. Also, government has made sure to remove the land alienation with the tribals because government it should further increase the levels of Gram Sabha participation in determining the allocation and use of the tribal lands because when Gram Sabha it is an body that democratically decides on what to do with a tribal land. So increased participation of Gram Sabha will remove the alienation and will remove the sense of insecurity that inhabits the tribal population. Further, the state governments should be disincentivized to exploit legal loopholes in order to not implement the tribal laws. So in this regard, the committee, it suggested that the fiscal transfers to state governments, they should be made conditional based on the levels of implementation of the acts such as PISA as well as Forest Rights Act that are undertaken by the state governments in general. So these were the discussions or suggestions that have been suggested by the Khaka committee in order to improve the development levels of the tribals in our country. And with this, let us move to the second article of the day, which you can see appeared in the text and context section of the Hindu newspaper. Now recently, there was this incident in the Indian Ocean, when where the uh, wooden boat which was carrying the ref Rohingya refugees to Indonesia, it capsized in the sea. And this brought attention to the plight of Rohingya refugees who have emerged from the country of Myanmar. Now naturally, when refugees, they enter any country, it creates challenges not just in social sphere, but also in economic as well as political sphere of the country. Now this in a way threatens the internal security of any country. So this topic that is illegal migration, it is important from GS paper 3 syllabus because the syllabus highlights security challenges and their management in border areas. Now, as you can understand from this map, the Rohingya, they are an ethnically minority com uh, community in the country that is Myanmar and they inhabit the western state that is Rakhine state in the Myanmar. Now, historically, this committee or this community has lived in Myanmar for many generations. However, this community have not been provided with the citizenship rights as the Myanmar, it is inhabited by a Buddhist dominated population. However, this Rohingya community, it is a commit community which is predominantly Muslim in their religious outlooks. However, uh, the state apparatus of Myanmar, it has undertaken a severe form of discrimination in form of violence. Now, because of this violence, which peaked in the year 2017, it forced the members of the Rohingya community to move to other locations or to lo look for safe heavens. So naturally, this Cox Bazar region, which is there in Bangladesh, it borders the Rakhine state of Myanmar. So this area, it saw the huge influx of migrants from Rakhine state into Bangladeshi territories. Now recently, the Bangladesh government, it has decided to locate these Rohingya Muslims into this Bhashanchara island, which is an island in the Indian Ocean region or Bay of Bengal. Now, predominantly, these uh, Rohingya Muslims, they either live in Myanmar in camps, which are not very, they either live in these Myanmar camps or they have migrated primarily to Bangladesh. Now, these were the important locations that I have discussed in the article. 
एंड मोर नोट इज प्रोवाइडेड इन दी नोट दैट आई अटैच इन दी डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स सो आफ्टर दिस सेशन एंड यू कैन रेफर टू दीज नोट Now let us move to the another set of articles. The first of which you can see appeared in the editorial section of the Hindu newspaper. Now, as you can understand, the thirteenth ministerial conference of the World Trade Organization it concluded recently. However, in this ministerial conference, it led to non-adoption of the investment facilitation for development agreement, as it was not. adopted due to opposition by some countries especially that of india now this particular agreement it is important from gs paper 2 perspective because the syllabus it highlights global groupings and agreements which affects india's int also questions related to various agreements in the wto they have been a subject of upsc questions especially in the year 2017 so you can understand this is an important news article as far as prelims is concerned so let us understand what is this investment hello am i audible now am i audible so yeah this investment facilitation development this is a agreement which was launched by china and a group of 70 countries now it was launched in the year 2017 and the negotiations it completed in the year 2013 now this is a form of plurilateral agreement because it is subscribed to by a subset of all wto members that only 120 out of 166 wto members they have agreed to this particular agreement so this is an example of a plurilateral agreement and not a multilateral agreement now this treaty or agreement it wants to facilitate investment in a country by bringing some legally binding provisions now these provisions they are aimed to streamline the administrative procedures as well as augmenting the regulatory functions in a country in order to make these functions transparent in nature further it is also important to note that these agreement they do not contain provisions related to market access investment protection or either investor state dispute settlement however india and other countries such as us and south africa they have opposed the implementation of this particular act and this is because of number of reasons the first is that india feels that this kind of an agreement it favors country which are heavily reliant on chinese investments so in a way you can understand india is apprehensive of the fact that these chinese investment may promote what is known as a debt diplomacy further some of the provisions in this particular agreement it wants the government to first consult with the investors before making any policy change so because of this particular subsection the government of india it feels that this kind of an agreement will encroach the policy space of the government thereby reducing its sovereignty in matters such as investors policy further india it feels that investment it is quite different from a trade issue because not every investment will lead to international trade so in a way india feels that such investment decisions should be kept out of the ambit of world trade organization which is primarily a trade related body so this have been the grounds of india's opposition in this regard so based on this information let us now solve the model question the first statement it has been launched by us led group of countries which again is an incorrect statement because i have already highlighted it was launched by a china led group of countries further the second statement it states it is a multilateral agreement which again is an in, incorrect statement because this is a plurilateral agreement as only a handful of wto countries have agreed to implement this agreement 
वेर इज ऑन दी अदर हैंड अ मल्टी लैटरल अग्रीमेंट विल इन्वॉल्व ऑल दी मेंबर्स ऑफ डब्ल्यू टी ओ दैट इज वन सिक्सटी सिक्स मेंबर्स सो दिस इज अ प्लूरी लैटरल अग्रीमेंट देर बाय सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट ऑल्सो इज इन करेक्ट द थर्ड स्टेटमेंट इंडिया इज अ मेंबर टू दिस अग्रीमेंट विच यू ऑलरेडी नो इज एन इनकरेक्ट स्टेटमेंट बिकॉज इंडिया हैज अपोज द इंप्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ सच एग्रीमेंट now based on this discussion option d is the correct answer as all of the options are incorrect now let us move to the second article which you can see appeared in the indian express as well as the business line newspaper now this news article it highlights that the uh, securities exchange and board of india it has decided to implement the same day settlement of equity shares for a limited group of stocks now this is a process that is reducing the amount of settlement time has been a key area of reform taken by the securities exchange bureau of india that is sebi now these stock markets primarily they are intend to mobilize resources from both retail as well as institutional investors thereby this topic is important from gs paper 3 perspective further developments related to india stock markets have been an area of interest of upsc particularly from this example of pyq of the year 2021 so you can understand this is an important development as far as prelims examination is concerned so let us understand what is this process of t plus 0 settlement but first of all let us understand what is a trade settlement now if any investor if it were to purchase any stock from the stock market he or she will contact a seller who will sell stocks to a buyer now in this process the buyer will provide for money in context of this particular transaction so all this transaction that is movement of stocks from seller to buyer and from and money from buyer to seller this whole process it is termed as a settlement now the time taken for this entire settlement before was t plus 2 days now this was recently reduced to t plus 1 settlement which means that if you decide to buy a stock especially on monday then that particular stock will be credited to your dmat account only by tuesday further the money that has been provided in the exchange of stocks will also be transacted or will be provided into your account only on the next day then this highlights what is called a t plus 1 settlement so you can understand that both transaction of both stocks and funds between the buyer and seller in current base system that is t plus 1 it takes some total of one day however sebi it is trying to reduce even this period of settlement time so t plus 0 settlement means that the process of transferring of both securities as well as funds will take place only within the same day that is t plus 0 settlement time now this short shorter settlement cycle it is intended to provide better access or faster access of both securities and funds to investors in the indian stock markets now this shorter settlement time has some benefits the first benefit is that it in has increased the trading opportunities for the indian stock market investors because by shorter settlement time it will increase the or it will provide better reaction to investors to market developments further by reducing the settlement risk the stock market regulator that is sebi it wants to increase the confidence level of investors in the indian stock market further this reduced settlement time it also increases the efficiency of liquidity management in the stock market because when stock uh, the stock market investors they'll get their funds and securities at the earliest possible time it will increase the avenues of stock market participants to reinvest this proceeds into another investment opportunity so you can understand it not just increases liquidity 
but it also provides them with agility to react to the market developments in a better manner. Further, it has also in a way promoted the trading strategies, particularly that of algorithmic trading as well as real-time trading of stock market and its stocks. So you can understand it creates increased opportunities for investors to indulge in algorithmic trading practices. Now we have curated this practice question which asks us to identify statements that does not reflect the benefits of T plus zero trade settlement. Now this is quite a straightforward question. So I'll expect each and every viewer to comment your answers in the comment section down below. Now let us move to the next article of the day, which you can see appeared in the Indian Express newspaper. Now this news article, it highlights that the powers of Lalit Kala Academy's chairman, it has been curbed by the Ministry of Culture. Now developments related to India's heritage and culture, it is important from GS paper one perspective. Further, as far as prelims of the year 2014, you can understand that questions related to classical language, which is an inherent part of India's culture, have been asked by UPSC before. So this is also an important topic as far as prelims is concerned. So let us understand what is this Lalit Kala Academy. Now this is National Academy of Arts, which was registered under the Society's Registration Act of the 1860. Now this body, it was inaugurated in the year 1954 by then Minister of Education that was Maulana Abdul Kalam Azad. Sorry, Abul Kalam Azad. Now this acts or this body, it is an autonomous body which is funded by the Ministry of Culture of the Union Government. Further, this body it wants to promote fine arts and visual arts in India in addition to dealing with international arts. Further, the chairman of this body, it is appointed by the president of India and he or she serves for the tenure of three years, which can be extended if the government wants. Further, this body, it is headquartered in Delhi as, and has regional centers in all corners of the country. Further, this Lalit Kala Academy also gives out what is known as National Art Award. So based on this information, let us now solve the model practice question. Consider the following statements. The first statement, the Lalit Kala Academy, it functions as an autonomous body under the Ministry of Culture. Now this I have already highlighted right here is a correct statement. Moving on to the second statement, the chairman of the Lalit Kala Academy is appointed for the term of five years, which you know for sure is an incorrect statement because he or she is appointed for a period of three years. Further, the third statement, the Lalit Kala Academy, it gives awards to artists for contributing in fields of performing and visual art forms. Now, although this Lalit Kala Academy gives award for visual art forms, however, it is Sangeet Natak Academy and not Lalit Kala Academy, which gives awards to artists for performing arts. So this third statement also is incorrect. So based on this information, you can understand the answer to this practice question is option A. Now let us move to the another article, which also appeared in the, the Hindu newspaper. Now this article, it highlights that International Astronomical Union, it has named an asteroid after Professor Jayant Murthy. Now Professor Jayant Murthy has played a key role, especially in the New Horizons mission of NASA, which was the first probe which was sent to the Pluto. So based on his contribution, an asteroid was named by the International Astronomical Union. Further, the awareness, especially with the field of space, it is mentioned in the GS Paper 3 syllabus. So this article is important from GS Paper 3 perspective. Additionally, Questions related to various developments in the field of space have been a key area of interest of UPSC, which you can see from this PYQ of the year 2019. 
so this news article it is important because it is the international astronomical union which assigns designations and names to various celestial bodies and any surface features for example recently indian international astronomical union it gave its assent to the government's decision to name the chandrayaan 3 landing spot as spatio shiv shakti now this international astronomical union it is a non governmental organization which is headquartered in the city of paris now this has a primary function first of all that this body it promotes astronomical research communication education and development further in addition to assigning designation and names to celestial bodies this union it also promotes or establishes standards for astronomical observation and data now in terms of following the planetary nomenclature this international astronomical union it make sure not to give names based on political military or any religious significance with exception to the names of political figures prior to this research organization that is isro it has been authorized for assigning names to planets and asteroids discovered by indian scientists again this is an incorrect statement because only the international astronomical union can give or assign names and designations to any celestial body be it an found by indian scientist or any other scientist the second statement planetary nomenclature usually assigns names having political military or religious significance now this statement second is also incorrect because iac rule line it prohibits the iau to name any body especially based on political military or religious significance so answer to this practice question is option d as both of the statements are incorrect now let us move to another article which you can see appeared in the business line newspaper now this news article it highlights that government is looking to borrow as much as 7.5 lakh crore from market and out of this 12000 crores will be borrowed in terms in form of green bonds now this green bond it is a form of debt security which is utilized to mobilize resource in the economy both government and private organizations can use these green bonds to get loans from the market now important bonds that have been news that have been in news have been asked by upsc before especially that in the year 2022 so you can understand green bond it is also an important topic as far as prelims are concerned now these green bonds they are in fixed interest interest bearing instruments which are used only for raising resources for environmentally conscious as well as climate resilient pro projects now it is important to note that investors who invest in these bonds they are protected from any project related risk so this is done to make these green bonds more attractive for the borrowers further there is no cap on foreign investment especially if investment is made on green bonds because these investment they are made under fully accessible route thereby there is no cap on foreign investments further the issuance of these green bonds they are regulated by financial finance ministry especially with respect to bonds which are raised by governments whereas bonds which are raised by private bodies they are regulated by the securities exchange board of india now the categories which are eligible to raise resources under these green debt securities they are defined by the securities exchange board of india and the exhaustive list i have provided in the notes so you can refer to the notes after this session ends so based on this information let us now solve the practice question the first statement investors in green bonds they do not bear any project related risk this is a correct statement because i have already highlighted here this step was undertaken in order to make green bonds more attractive to investors 
Further, there is no cap on foreign investment in these bonds. This is also an uh, correct statement because these bonds, they are accessible under fully accessible route. Thereby, there is no cap on these foreign investments. The third statement in India, the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, it regulates the issuance of private green bonds. Now, this is an incorrect statement because it is SEBI and not Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, which regulates the issuance of green bonds as far as private organizations are concerned. So, based on this information, option B is correct as statement 1 and 2 were correct. Now let us move to the last article of the day, which you can see also appeared in the page 11 of the business line newspaper. Now this news article, it highlights that border road organization, it has constructed an all weather road to Ladakh. Now various important news, uh, sorry, various important mountain peaks and their locations have been a subject of UPSC questions in the past. So this news is important from prelims perspective. Now this, now this particular project, it was implemented as it connects the strategic portion of Manali, which is located in Himachal Pradesh to the Leh region, which is located in the union territory of Ladakh. Now this connectivity, which connects both Nimu and Darcha area in these two areas, it is important development as far as movement of military is concerned because it not only increases the defense preparedness of Indian military but it also increases the development of Zanskar region of Ladakh. Now this project it connects Lahol area of Himachal Pradesh with that of Zanskar mountains which is located in the union territory of Ladakh. Now, I have attached a photo which provides important mountain passes as far as India is concerned. So, based on this information, let us now solve the model question. Now, if you are unable to see this uh, passes in this slide, do not worry, I have attached a high resolution file in the notes. So, you can refer to the notes after the session ends. Now, consider the following pairs. Now, this pairs asks us to identify passes and the locations of these important passes. The first is Shinkun La Pass, which is right here paired with Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. As you can understand from today's discussion, it is an incorrect pairing because this Shinkun La Pass, it connects Himachal Pradesh with that of Ladakh. Now, the second is Bomdi La Pass, which is located in Arunachal Pradesh. So, you can understand from this image, it is a correct pairing. The third pair, it highlights Niti Pass. It is located in the state of Sikkim, which is incorrect because Niti Pass, it is located in the state of Uttarakhand. Further, Banihal Pass, it is located in Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, which you can see from this image is a correct pairing. Now, as pairing second and fourth are correct, whereas pairing first and third are incorrect thereby option b is the correct answer to this practice question so with this i conclude our today's discussion of the dns and i'll be seeing and we'll be seeing and we'll be seeing you again tomorrow sharp at 6 pm so until then i bid you a very good night